a preacher bought a lawnmower at a yard sale. It runs great, the seller said. The next day, the preacher brought it back. It runs great? I couldn't even start it. Oh, it runs just fine, the seller said with a smile. But in order to start it, you first have to cuss up a storm. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I could do that, the pastor protested indignantly. I haven't used that language in years. Not to worry, the seller said. Just keep pulling on the start cord and it will all come back to you in no time. <laughs> in our scripture today, we hear a familiar story of Jesus getting really, really, really angry. Perhaps not angry enough to cuss up a storm, but we will never know. Jesus enters the temple in Jerusalem during the Passover feasts. And what he encounters there is not what one would expect in, uh, in a place dedicated to worship. Instead of an atmosphere of reverence and holiness, Jesus finds the temple turned into a marketplace filled with money changers and merchants and selling animals for sacrifice. Imagine coming through these doors one Sunday morning to find that the place is like a market. Imagine coming in one Sunday morning and Phil James is selling used cars here. <laughs> Imagine coming in and the noise of people bartering with each other fills the, 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 the atmosphere. You know, my mom, when I used to go to the market with her, um, she used to tell the market vendors, you know, I've been coming to you for 12 years. Every Saturday morning, come rain or shine, and you treat me so badly. Just add another tomato to the pile. Think of coming in on a Sunday to worship and hearing conversations like that, like my mother trying to barter with the poor vendor, trying to get an extra vegetable or so. Imagine coming in to the smell of animals and the smell of their owners who haven't been home in a few days because they're trying to sell their livestock. Right, Jan? Yeah. You should see Jan's face. Imagine that in this corner, there's a busker playing loudly, probably not very good on the guitar. And in that corner, there are guys uh, sitting around gambling. Imagine, that, imagine coming into worship one Sunday, and that's the scene here. This was Jesus' situation as he went to have a quiet moment in the temple, which was supposed to be a house of prayer, a sacred space where people could encounter the divine. Instead, it had become a marketplace, a den of thieves, as they described in the scripture. Jesus' actions in cleansing the temple were not just about restoring order to a chaotic scene. There's, there was much more to it than that. They were a symbolic act with profound spiritual significance. By driving out the money changers and overturning the tables, Jesus was challenging the religious authorities and calling them out for their, um, for their hypocrisy. But Jesus wasn't just concerned with the external trappings of religion. He was concerned with the condition of the heart. He wanted to remind the people that true worship is not about outward rituals or ceremonies. It's about inner transformation, sincere devotion to the holy and full fellowship with each other. Makes me want to ask a question of you guys. How do we feel about our own space of worship? Is our space truly dedicated to nurturing a relationship with the holy, 
Do we feel at home and at ease here when we come in on Sundays? Better yet, is our community a place which nurtures healthy relationships with each other? Do you look forward to coming in on Sundays to be with each other? And do you feel wonderful when you leave this place? How do you feel on Sundays after you go to the, the glow room and talk with each other and share stories? How do you feel on Sundays when you leave this place? So I did my global experience for school. Before I could graduate, uh, before each of us could graduate, we have to go somewhere in the world. At one point, it was to do missionary work, um, but it's not so anymore. Um, so we could go any place in the world to get a, an experience um, of being among people and learning among people who are not in our immediate uh, environment. And so I decided to go to Atlanta. I was there for five weeks, and I was volunteering and learning and working in a shelter for homeless LGBTIQ youth. Oh, what experience it was. But when I was there, one of the joys of being in the American South was the worship experiences I got to be a part of. I went to a different black church every Sunday for five weeks. Oh, my God. I had goosebumps the second I walked in and church started. And I was emotional the whole two hours I was sitting there. I was sobbing like a baby the whole two hours I was sitting there. The music and the passion and the preaching and the fellowship. There's nothing like the black church. And although I didn't agree with much of the theology I heard, I left each church feeling as though I was floating on air. I, I was high. It's as if there's a big fat fly here who's been playing with me all morning since I got here. It, it's as if the spirit in, in these churches is bigger and louder and more enveloping. And um, it's, as, it's as though you could see the spirit floating around and, and touching it and hearing it and seeing it work. That's how it is in a black, in black worship, in a black church. And you could feel as though you're being physically raised up by the Spirit as it carries you home. It's that I, I float all the way home. And it's as though the Spirit stays with you as long as you're in the zone. You could, you could keep that high as long as you're, you're, you're still focused and you're still open. I sometimes felt myself floating all day Sunday just from going to church that Sunday morning. Do you feel the same way when you leave here on Sundays? What, what can we do? What can I say so that you may experience this spiritual uplifting when you're here on Sundays? I, I, I seriously want to know, not today, but um, let me know during the week. Give me a call or send me an email. And let me know what your experience is when you leave here on Sundays. Do you leave here feeling high? Or do you leave here feeling flat, unaffected? Am I or the other presenters on Sundays saying the things that speak to your heart? 
Does the music make you feel warm inside and joyful? Do the scripture or, and the prayers move you to action and reflection? Does the interaction with each other make you feel loved and cared for and appreciated in the community? I'd like to know the answer to these. You know, maybe what we'll do is a survey thing. I think we talked about it in, um, in council maybe a couple months ago. Maybe we should do a survey, huh? I think we'll do a survey. I'd like to hear from you guys. How do you feel when you leave here on Sundays? And I genuinely want to know because I want you to feel lifted, raised to a place of peace and happiness when you walk through these doors and when you leave this place and go back into a world that is not always the most friendly or peaceful place. So you, you got to get it here because it's hard for you to get it out there. What can we do for you to feel a raising from the spirit? First, how can we help you in the nurturing of your relationship with the holy? How, how is your prayer life? You know, when we turn to the holy in prayer, seeking guidance and strength, we open ourselves up to the power of the Spirit, which can lift us up and renew our spirits. How is your prayer life? Furthermore, when we pray, we can find assurance in the promise of Jesus that we will not be left comfortless. John 14, 18 says, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Even in our darkest moment, we can take comfort from the presence of the Spirit who will lift us to a place of solace and peace. So, have we been providing enough resources to foster your prayer life? You know, our spirits are also raised up through the community of believers. As members of this community, we're called to lift up one another, to bear each other's burdens, and to encourage each other in faith. When we come together in fellowship and worship, do you experience an uplifting power of unity and mutual support? I kind of think we do here. We're very connected as a community here at Mount Zion. Finally, our spirits are raised up when we can hope. Hope for better lives for ourselves and our loved ones. Hope for a brighter future for this church, our community here. You know, I, I want to share a story with you. I'm looking at the time. You know, usually during community time, I sit here and I'm freaking out because I often think, my gosh, I have so much to say during the sermon. I don't want to cut back the sermon. Let's get through it, Phil James. <laughs> I want to share a story. So, when I started Trinity, I was so disillusioned by the church. Since I left Antigua in 1994, I think, um, nothing had worked in the way uh, of me finding a church where I could nurture, feel like I'm nurturing a relationship with God in community. And I was going to an Anglican church near where I lived. Tila was christened there. But there was, I, just to say that I belong to a church because I'm churched. And, um, but there was no zest for me there. 
neither for me and neither for my baby, neither for Tila. So we hardly went. We showed up once in a while. But then one Sunday, I walked through the doors of Trinity. I was invited to come there by um, Pastor Paul to sing for an event. And I found a girlfriend there, Amanda. Amanda was my girlfriend. She was singing there, and she was telling me about the church. And so I came back on Sunday. And when I was sitting in the congregation on Sunday, I just kind of thought, yeah, it's just another church, whatever. Until I heard Paul say, say something. It just blew my mind. Paul said, whatever it was he was saying, but the sentence is, you are good enough as you are. You are worthy of God as you are. God loves you as you are. That changed everything for me. Because I'm coming from a background where you've got to be washed by the blood of the lamb. You've got to be, you know. And I've always felt, you know, I'm not a bad person. I was um, always very caring and helpful in community. And, and I always thought it was pretty fantastic. I just didn't believe that I needed to be saved, right? And here is a minister that was affirming in me um, my knowledge that God was with me and I didn't have to be something else for God to be with me. But then on top of the minister saying that in that church, my daughter and I were embraced by a loving and caring and genuine community. And the first time that we went to Trinity, um, they gave Tila a popsicle. She was two. They gave her a popsicle. Monday morning, Tila got up and she threw a tantrum, wanting to put on her pretty dress to go back to the popsicle, the popsicle church. <laughs> and she threw a tantrum Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. And on Sunday, I, I woke up and said, Tila, guess where we're going? She said, where? The popsicle church. Yay! right? She never felt that way about the other church. There was just something about that community, that place where my two and a half year old felt a lifting of her spirit when she walked through that door that Sunday morning. And so did her mama. And the rest is history. Do you know um, when, when I was in Windsor, I told Tila, you know, we're going to change membership from Trinity to my church in Windsor. And she was angry. And she says, I don't care what you do, but my membership remains at Trinity. That, that's how much a lifting of spirit she encountered when she was in that place. How do you feel when you walk in these doors on Sunday? And how do you feel when you leave here? My fervent prayer is that you experience a lifting of your spirit by the spirit. And nothing close to how Jesus felt when he walked through the temple that day to pray. If you do not feel raised up by your worship experience, I need to hear from you. Thanks be to God. Amen.